Welcome. This video is intended to explain some techniques and correct some common mistakes I see glider pilots making in Condor and in real life. We are starting off just below release height and searching for our first thermal. Note that I am looking slightly up in order to better see the clouds ahead of me on course, and I can still see my primary instruments in this view in Condor. The other instruments are not important at this stage, just the variometer and the airspeed, as well as the clouds ahead of me. Notice that I'm being a bit aggressive with my airspeed, because I have an airport directly in glide behind me, and the clouds appear to be working well, so I want to get to these clouds before they die. Also notice my use of the trim, which will pop up in the lower right corner from time to time. Anticipation is the name of the game. Note that I pull up as soon as I realize this is sustained lift, reset my view, and then push over before reaching my target airspeed. The yellow triangle, best glide speed, is also close to the optimum thermaling speed for most modern gliders. Now, watch the consistent bank angle and speed control, which will lead to consistent thermaling circles. You will see this reflected in the PDA display, where the circles are only offset by the wind drift factor each time around. Notice all of the small stick movements and adjustments that I'm making in order to hold this bank angle and airspeed. Here I make a mistake, let the airspeed bleed off as I raise the nose too high, but I quickly correct it, catch the correction, and re-establish my proper attitude and airspeed. It went by quick. Did you miss it? Let's break it down in slow-mo. As I come around the corner, the nose will rise above the horizon. I relax the stick a bit already, anticipating the airspeed dropping. Seeing the airspeed drop, I relax the stick even further, allowing the nose to fall through the horizon. Now the airspeed needle has reverse direction, so I pull some on the stick, anticipating the increase in airspeed and catching it before accelerating too far. Now I've re-established the nose on the horizon, and I resume thermaling corrections. Again, anticipation is key. Okay, so that was still a lot to observe in a short period, so you may want to re-watch the last segment a couple of times while just focusing on a single element, like the control stick position, the airspeed needle, or the glider's attitude. Also notice that throughout this thermal, the yaw string is not quite centered. If you look at the position of the pilot's knees, you'll see that this is because I'm holding a small amount of outside, or top, rudder. Having the yaw string point slightly outside the turn is a common technique that helps in a few ways. Most notably, it helps you counteract the overbanking tendency of most gliders. Without this input, you need to provide a larger aileron correction to stop the glider from overbanking. Too much aileron correction creates more drag and causes a lot of glider pilots to slowly unbank the glider over time. That lower bank angle widens their circle, and before you know it, you've flown out of the core. There's more advanced stuff going on with this rudder correction, but for now, just understand that a little bit of outside rudder can help your thermaling technique without any major performance penalty. And I want to reiterate, it's a small amount of pressure, just enough for that slight yaw string deviation. Note that if you don't have a head tracker, you can map the hat switch on your joystick to look around. This is very useful for clearing thermals and looking up at the clouds above you. You can press a button to reset your view to center. Here I have chosen to leave this lift and move underneath a nearby cloud. I turn and dive through the thermal while accelerating so that I am already up to speed before the vario goes negative. If I had remained at thermaling speed until the lift went away, I'd have to accelerate through the sink, losing much more of my hard-won altitude. Also notice that I'm retrimming the glider to hold this new airspeed. How about my thermal entry that time? Did you notice how I not only pulled up, but then pushed over to avoid dropping below my target airspeed? Or that I am retrimming the elevator to maintain that attitude? Trimming away most of the stick forces allows you to make more delicate corrections and feel the thermal better. Why not rewind and watch that thermal entry again? Here I notice that the Vario is weaker on one side of my thermal turn, the east side. So, when the glider is pointing west and the Vario needle rises, I unbank briefly to shift my circle to the west. Then, I pull back into my normal bank and retrim the glider for the changing pitch and bank angle. 
but look at the Vario Needle and notice that I am still not fully centered in the lift. However, over-focusing on this is about to lead me to a mistake. Can you guess what it is? Looking at the PDA, we see my track appears to be overlapping itself. This is because I'm making thermal corrections into the wind. So my offsets to the west are keeping me over the same piece of ground while the thermal drifts east. Whoop! And here's my mistake! I was so focused on the instruments that I didn't see cloud base approaching and almost went IMC. This is why it's always important to keep shifting your view to the outside of the cockpit and have a visual scan going. Alright, I hope this demonstration helps you to thermal better, fly further, and fly safer. See you in the sky!